Yo, what's good guys? Welcome back to a new Valorant Academy video. This one is going to be aimed at the higher ranks and it's going to be 10 things I have learned from being a Radiant. As always guys, like the video, comment down below what you want to see next time on the Academy videos and subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already. The first point I want to go over are pre-fly spots. Quite commonly in Valorant, you'll be able to pre-fly certain angles where people most usually stand, okay? For example, there's one back site on Haven, on back site B site. You can pre-fly to A link and C link where most people will be looking in to back site behind the wood. Another common spot would also be hooker on bind. So when you're defending, you can shoot on the right and the left of the window. And if there's someone there, you'll most likely get a wall bank kill. The only bad thing about pre-fire spots, guys, is that if you use your ammo, some people will, if you don't kill them, peek out as you're reloading and kill you. So there are some negatives to this. Pre-fire spots are quite important if you do want potentially a free kill. I'm holding mid, cross. I'm sure. Two guns. One's, one's probably going to jump big CT, I think. Ooh, blocking sight. The second point is post-plant situations. Whenever you're in a ranked game, make sure you focus on your post-plant situations. Use utility wisely after you've put the bomb down. Whenever you're in a ranked game, I want you guys to think, okay, the bomb is down, what do we do now, okay? When planting, make sure you can see the bomb from certain angles. It's always better to have two angles you can see the bomb from, therefore the enemies, when they come to defuse the bomb, they have to check both angles. For example, on bind, when you plant directly in front of sight, you can see it from hooker, and you can see it from long, and also you can see it from elbow. You have three spots here the enemies have to check before they can defuse the bomb. Another example, quite commonly on icebox, you can plant default, which is just in front of the green box. A good thing you can do here is play post plant behind yellow container. You can play post plant on B main, so you can get on top of the metal or you can get behind the metal container. Or if you have enough time and your teammates are playing time to the best of their ability, you can then wrap around middle and wall bang through the green box to kill the planter. So jiggle peeking, this is the third point. Now a lot of people do say you can't jiggle peek in Valorant, but when I say jiggle peek, I don't mean the same type of jiggle as you do in Counter-Strike. So in Counter-Strike, you would just quickly show your shoulder. In, in Valorant, you kind of have to jump around the corner and like quickly pull away. That's one thing you can do. What I mean by jiggle peeking is, for example, if you're back sight on ascent on B, so a boathouse, and you've got the bomb down and you're in a two versus one post plant situation, you need to know if they're defusing or not if they tap the bomb. So what I sometimes do is just show myself. So you've got two entrances on the back sight of B. You can quickly cross one of the entrances to see if they're defusing. You can also jiggle peek the normal way, only really if they have an operator. Pretty much, this is me in game, right? And this would be the model, it'd be like, if you know they've got an operator, quickly show your shoulder, force them to fly, and then you can swing out and maybe get the kill. If it is a post-plant situation, let's say a one-on-one, -on -one, what you can do to jiggle peek is count in your head if they're defusing the bomb. So count to four seconds and then peek. If I know that when I jiggle it, they've got the bomb half, I know that I have to be very quick on the next peek. If I know that they haven't halved it, they're probably quite scared and they're probably going to try and take the fight against you. Take that one-on-one -on -one fight and not defuse it. Number four is do not backseat game. Only give vital information in your games. A lot of the time I experience two versus one, three versus one situations and my teammates who are dead are in my ear telling me what to do. Don't do it, okay? I can't stress this enough. This is probably a point that everybody needs to know, not just what I've learned in Radiant, but I've most commonly learned in Radiant because this is when it has the worst effects. So if I'm playing a two versus one situation, I don't want somebody to say, do this, do that. All I need is information that I'm going to find useful. How much damage you've done to somebody and where they were last seen. Another thing about useful information will be call flashbangs. If you're flashing, call it. If you're going to flash somewhere for me to peek, call it. If you're going to stun somewhere, call it. I cannot stress enough and it gets me so angry when people just do not communicate their flashes and in the ranked game that you're playing, you could probably get two or three kills off a good flashbang communicated by your team. 
What a flashbang! What a flashbang! What a good flashbang, man! So tip five I want to give you guys is off angles. I cannot stress enough, do not hold 90 degree angles, okay? Because more than likely, someone's going to come around the corner and have their crosshair placement ready at that 90 degree angle. Haven, for example, but if I'm sitting on the stairs, bottom of A, and I'm holding the CT push, a 90 degree angle is very bad, okay? What you can do is hold maybe a 60 degree angle, so what they call an off angle. Because then if someone is coming from the A site from CT, if they're checking A link, if you're in an off angle, you'll be able to see their weapon and see their arm if they're checking A link and your spawn side, okay? Right, the next tip I want to give you guys is avoid 50-50 peaks. I know Valorant have over the past tried to fix angles where you have to check left a very deep corner, but at the same time there's a very deep right corner. So when you're going in, it's a 50-50 chance that you're going to survive if someone's sitting in one of the corners, okay? So over time, especially on split, they have taken away some of these 50-50 angles. But still, there are these 50-50 angles, and you need to be aware that you don't really want to try and walk into them. On Split, there was a wall up, and somebody asked me in one of my YouTube videos in the comments, why did you choose to break that wall in B main, and break this one segment? Well, the way the wall is angled, I chose to break the left block of the wall, because then if someone's sitting in the left corner, I can clear that angle, okay, first. It, as I'm clearing the left angle, they won't be able to see me from the right because it's not a 50-50 angle the way I've broken the wall. The next point I want to make is unnecessary peaks when you don't need to and you make it a 4 versus 5 in your game. Unless you have somebody there to trade you, which at higher level gameplay you usually do if there's communication in the team, try not to peek it unless you're confident you know where somebody is because putting your team at a 4 versus 5 disadvantage, especially if you're defending, is very bad. When it comes down to solo peaks, if you're playing post-plant, and I always mention post-plant, but this is a very important thing when it comes to playing Valorant and it comes to the competitive level in Mortal and Radiant. When it comes to post-plant, you want to make sure that if you're holding the bomb, when one of you takes contact, if you die, the second person, if it's a two versus one, the second person is there to trade it, all right? Another key point I want to get across to you guys, okay, is... Trying to play slow and trying to play fast. Remember guys, there's not 20 seconds to a round. You have well over a minute and a half to actually fight, work fight, the fight. round. Play for a pick if you want. If the call is to play for a pick, try and spread about the map and play for a pick. But make sure you're in pairs, okay? Trade kills. Knowing when and where to go fast is very important. If you're playing a pistol round, for example, depending on your agent's composition, if you have a raise and a jet, there are two people who can get into a site quite fast, maybe you want to explode and go quite fast. If you don't have these Judas agents that can get onto site fast, maybe play it slow, play for a pick, spread around the map and try and make the enemies rotate. Just remember, there is more than 20 seconds to a round, okay? Don't be afraid of executing a site with 30 seconds left. Also think that the minds of the enemy as well, when there's 30 seconds left, they could be getting a little bit impatient. They might push you. Now, the penultimate point, one that a lot of people do talk about and I get in my Twitch chat a lot is Phantom or Vandal, which one are you? Now, I say the Phantom and the Vandal discussion is very situational. It depends on the map. And I also find it depends who you're playing as well. It depends how aggressive and how far back you play. Personally, if I'm playing an agent, for example, Phoenix, who I've been playing quite a lot lately, I like to use the Phantom. You're getting up close and personal, okay? You're flashing and you're instantly going around the corner trying to get that kill. When I talk about the maps as well, I like different maps for different weapons. So for Split, for example, I much prefer the Phantom. I'm not sure why, maybe because it's more of a close quarter map and you get a lot of closer combat fights, meaning that you can spray down somebody. Maps like Ascent, for example, long range, you can shoot them from bottom mid to top mid or from short to mid link. It's stuff like this that makes the Phantom and Vandal discussion very situational. Now this last point, I want to tell you guys that I have learned from higher level gameplay in Mortal and Radiant, is faking plays and making moves the enemies don't expect. When I say things that the enemies don't expect, I'll give you some examples. One, more, no? One thing is fake dashing. There's a lot of things I do and I fake it. So jet fake dashes are insane. You can smoke somewhere, fake dash. For example, if someone's defusing the bomb, just use your dash, okay? You haven't got to dash at them, dash into a wall. They might jump off of the spike because they think that you've dashed at them. This just gives you more time to play with, okay? And it just makes them not defuse the bomb. 
There's also a lot of times when I'll smoke and dash into a smoke and then walk back out of the smoke. The way I've just came from, if that makes sense. Because then the enemies are going to check the other side of the smoke where I've dashed. One key thing I want to point out when I say that make plays the enemies aren't expecting is pushing enemy utility. Molotovs, they do quite a lot of damage. For example, the Brimstone Molotovs and the Phoenix Molotovs. But the Killjoy Molotovs, right, you can push through as long as you're not in it too much. In a recent game I just played, I walked through a Killjoy Molotov and actually got a double kill. People think just because you've deployed the Molotov, they think they're safe. They think that they can quickly get a bit of utility out and I'm not going to push them. Another good example is pushing Sage Slows. As long as you're shift walking, they can't hear you push the Sage Slow. So if a Sage Slow is somewhere, maybe you even walk over it and they won't expect you to push it. Again, very situational. Don't do it too much in one game because the enemies will start to expect it. So these are 10 points that I would say I've learned from Radiant level gameplay, okay? And things that you guys might be able to take away and actually use in your gameplay. And it might be able to help you rank up. I hope you enjoyed the video, guys, and I'll see you on the next one.